Jim sent this to us. It's kind of a review. We didn't ask for this yet. If we did, we would on the review platform. But he just literally sent us his message. He said, he said, hey, we just closed on them with our two-family house in West Milwaukee. They agreed to a fair price with us. And uh, that was just about four weeks ago. Everything went smooth. There were no realtors. We're very happy with their professional services. We highly recommend Jennifer Bice Houses. During the pandemic, it was easy, fast, professional. They even gave us extra time to remain in the house. So basically, we did what we said we would do. And then we got a nice review from it, okay? Just like that. So um, that's how that works. Here's another one, 9149 North 94th Street. Um, I love this house. Um, here's the thing with this particular property. I told you about part of it yesterday. The seller on this one, he he was the a little bit grumpy guy. Like when I first called him, he was like, hey, are you going to pay me full price? Are you going to pay me full price? And then when I got to the house, he was standing on the front porch, the front porch that you see right here as I pulled up in my Jeep, parked right there. Looking at him, he's standing in the front door with his arms crossed, just staring out. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> but then I got up to the door and I did what I taught yesterday. I relieved pressure. I just said, hey, uh, nice to finally connect with you. Hey, just so you know, if this works, awesome. If it doesn't work, that's totally okay. I might even be able to refer a different buyer to melted away tons of pressure he's like well really what does that mean and then i explained like hey you know sometimes it doesn't work with me like i can probably refer you to somebody else at the end of the day it's got to be win-win and he's like okay great next thing i know we're walking around the property he introduces me to his wife his three little girls he's pulling out mortgage statements he's showing me everything i signed the deal with him on the spot i signed it for what he really needed there was another investor that had been out there that made an offer to him, but it just wasn't there. It was a cash offer. And then there was a realtor that had been out there that said, you need to clean up this house before I can list it. You're not going to get what you need out of it in this condition. And so he was, he was kind of stuck. And that's why he was grumpy when he called me. Like he's just like, he thought it was going to be another repeat of what he already experienced. And so I asked him, what do you really need? He said, I need seven grand to move to the next city. My brother's got a job for me. I need seven grand. And I said, okay, I'll get you the seven grand. I'll take over the house from here and you can pack up and move. We signed on it. Now, so you know what I was getting into. I had to take over his $118,000 mortgage. Okay. That doesn't mean I went to the bank and signed like paperwork at the bank. It simply means that I bought the house knowing that I'm going to make monthly payments on this mortgage. I promised the seller I would. I'm going to, it's in my company name, but I'm, I'm cool with that because I got a little bit of closing costs I have to factor, but I'm cool with that because I had a real estate agent, the same one that I told you about. I had him run comps and he said, Hey, all day long, it's worth 198,000 after it's cleaned up. And I'm like, huh, I can get this house for basically seven grand to the seller and three grand worth of closing costs. And it's worth 198. Who here would do this deal? If you could put in 10 grand, to take over a property with a $118,000 mortgage that's worth 198, who here would take this deal? You're you're asking good questions. Karen's saying, well, hey, how much in repairs? How much in repairs? Christopher says, all day, sign me up from Ed. Hal says, me, me, me. Okay, I'm hanging with the right crowd. Manny says, all day long, yes. Gladys says, yes. Karen says, ready. Okay, I yeah, it's a pretty, it's, it's a, a no-brainer. Like, unless the house were like, like ready for a gas can and a match, like it's it's a good deal. Um, this particular one, I'll, I'll just tell you, I think I have the numbers posted in here. It didn't need much. Carpet, paint, appliances. It's, uh, I think I have the number on a, a slide or two forward, but literally it's one that I asked my father-in-law to go to and he did probably half the work in there. He's retired and it's kind of a fun thing for him to do. And then the rest of it, he brought in a guy that, that came in and helped him shampoo the carpets and then like did touch up paints and whatnot. So it wasn't much. So walking into this deal, I had equity, okay? A good, strong equity position. And then what happened next is, I wanted to make sure like my seven grand, my initial payment to the seller was safe. So like I'm analyzing it with the realtor, it's worth 198. I also analyzed it with a property management company. I said, Hey, how much would, um, this thing rent out for 2006 built house? It's newer, all that kind of stuff. It looks pretty good. Good neighborhood. How much would it rent for? And, um, and then they told me, well, it would rent for 1300 per month. 
I did the math on the guy's mortgage. He had an $800 per month payment. It was actually like seven ninety eight, dollars And that included taxes and insurance. He had a really good rate. It was really solid mortgage. And I could rent it for $1,300 per month. So I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a cash flow machine. All I got to do is get this place cleaned up and I can immediately rent it and get some good cash flow. I thought about that. But then I'm like, you know what? I just want to test the market. Okay. I want to test it. And so I tested it. I put it out there for sale. I listed it for $189,000. You could literally go to Zillow right now and you could see the entire transaction. So all these numbers that I'm showing you, it's literally what, what we were able to do. Uh, I listed for 189. It sold the first day on market, very first day. And um, I accepted the offer. They gave me a little bit lower than, than the list price, 185. I signed it. I accepted. I'm like, hey, you know, there's enough here for me. There's enough for you. If you want 185, great, let's go. And so I signed it. Typically, when you sell something the first day on market, it means that you probably underpriced it, but that's okay. Again, like I had enough of a discount and it all works. Okay. So um, here's kind of the, the final shakeout. This is the actual settlement statement from the buyer that bought it for me. Um, we got, a, I know what happened on my end. I got a wire back to our bank account for around $45,000. Okay. Now I did out of the 45, remember I did have to pay some expenses, not realtors or anything like that. That was already deducted. But from the 45, I had to pay my father-in-law. I had to pay for carpet shampooing. I had to pay for the contractor that he brought in to help him with the painting and then the shampoo guy. And then I had to buy the appliances. So like I had a, some, some minor expenses to take out of that. Um, plus the, the initial seven grand I gave the seller and the three grand I gave to the title company to close it. But all in all, it was still like 30 plus on my side. Okay. 30 plus on my side. And this was in 78 days, start to finish. If you can see the dates on here, the dates will show that we bought it and sold it 78 days, start to finish. Okay. So this stuff is happening, especially with the whole shakeup that's happened in the world and there's a lot of sellers right now that they defaulted on their payments during the, the height of the pandemic. And those defaulted payments didn't just go away. Although foreclosures froze and unprecedented, it's never happened in U.S. history, probably never happened in world history where they just freeze foreclosures, but they froze for cl closures for two years. They're coming out now. They're coming out. It's sad. Um, but it's not something that you and I are going to stop on our own, but I, we could certainly help sellers. We can certainly step into situations like this. I showed you yesterday about Cynthia. That was a foreclosure situation. We can step in and we can help these people save some of their equity. We can give them some cash so that they can pack up and move on. We can turn the negative situation that they might have a foreclosure on their record, a foreclosure or a bankruptcy. We can turn a lot of those bad situations around for them by, by getting in front of them, letting them know that we're here to help. Okay. This is John. John sent me this message. I love getting messages from John. John runs a nonprofit, by the way, up in Northwest Washington. Really good guy, heart of gold. He takes all of the profits after he feeds his family, but all the extra profits from his business, they go into helping homeless veterans. And so like whenever he gets a deal, I always want to share it because it's like this guy, he's blessed. And if you ever want a really good charitable cause, look up John Hubach really good dude. Um, definitely worth, worth, worth connecting with at some point in life, but he came through our program and, um, every contract he gets, he's helping a veteran. I just love that. Helping a homeless vet. This is my lovely wife, Jennifer. Um, 